Welcome to the Friday, June 7th episode of Stacks on Deck. I'm your host, Walter, and this is Brave Birds DFS. It's one of the best places for PGA, NFL, MLB, and NBA news, and of course, DFS. Come on, let's all admit it. We were watching NBA last night. We were not watching MLB. The finals were on. However, no basketball tonight. Got a 10-game slate, so let's jump in. The first thing we'll do is pull up my checklist, and we can see that I'm going to look at six things today like I look at every day, the previous day, rain out concerns, and then I'm going to give you my top stacks, top pitchers, top hitters, and then I'm going to create a DK stack build with you. All right, so looking at yesterday, and remember yesterday was a combination of an early slate and a late slate. So you have the bag of the Red Sox. I recommended them. They were my fifth. They were number five on my top five stacks, and they went out and scored 14 runs. So if you use the Red Sox stack, you're feeling real good right now. Also recommended uh, Wu. He went out and got 28.3 fantasy points. So good for you. And then I recommended Fernando Tatis Jr., who went out and got 18 fantasy points. But you got the overdraft. You have the Royals who only scored four runs, which isn't terrible, but it isn't enough a lot of times to get you that bag. Then you had two Orioles. I recommended the Orioles stack and you had uh, Santander go out there. If you put him in your stack, he got you zero fantasy points. And then you had Hayes. If you put him in your stack, you got four fantasy points. So it is what it is. All right, so rain out concerns. I have one game that I have concerns about, and I have elevated concerns about Seattle going to KC. We can go to uh, the other tab, and we can see that today. Here's why I have elevated concerns. It is a 90% chance of heavy rain. Rainfall amounts between one and two inches possible. And once again, this is kind of that situation. We can go back to the slide. It's one of those situations where one of the situations where the rain is probably going to happen after the first pitch, which is the worst situation. There's nothing they can really do to prepare for this. So I really have some concerns about that Seattle versus KC game. All right, so let's look at my top stacks. So when I'm looking at my stacks, when I'm creating my stacks, I'm looking at the matchup that the team has. I'm looking at how the team's been playing recently with those key stats, home run, OPS, average, you know, stolen bases, all those kind of things. I'm looking at how they, you know, how their their runs, hits, and everything are distributed throughout the entire lineup. And when I do that, I have the Astros, the Reds, number two, Dodgers, number three, Diamondbacks number four and Red Sox number five. You notice the Yankees are missing. They're going up against Yamamoto, and we'll talk about that later. So it's really the battle who's going to win. I can't put I can't put them in the top five because they have a really tough matchup against uh, the Dodgers. All right, so top pitchers. So I like Lodolo. He has a good matchup. Once again, we're looking at teams. You want to have a good matchup by that. You want to have teams that strike out a lot so you can get the 2.75 points. You want to believe that the team that you're, pick, you're picking is going to win so you can get the win points. Uh, you also want to have a team that's just not doing well. Plus, you want to have a pitcher doing well. So I like Lodolo, 9,600. Yamamoto, once again, this is very risky. We know the Yankees have been world beaters re recently, so kind of can be a sneaky kind of pivot from Lodolo, who kind of makes more sense from a salary and matchup perspective. Or if you just want to avoid all of that, I really like Valdez's matchup and his salary is only 8,200. All right. So then you have the top, you have the top hitters. We have Gorman. His salary actually went down a hundred dollars. I think he has a 12 game hitting streak right now and four home runs in the past uh, five games, uh, 3,800 salary second base for St. Louis. And then we have Fernando Tatis, who I believe has a seven or eight game hitting streak. Um, he's batting almost 600 in the past seven games, 5,500. So a little bit more expensive in the outfield. And then you have Bobby Witt Jr. If you're going to stick with people whose dad used to play in baseball, been killing it on the year, 6,200 at shortstop and plays for the Royals. All right, so let's go over the DraftKings and let's look at this Astro stack. And one thing about stacking is um, not every player is going to make 100% sense, but we also have looked at a lot of winning lineups. And you know that a lot of times you'll have a player that sneaks in there that really has no statistical reason for sneaking in there. So that we'll start with Altuve. So obviously we know he has the potential. He hasn't been amazing yet, but he's in a good lineup and a good matchup. Um, so just because of that, he does have eight stolen bases, which I like. But once again, we know what Altuve's position, um, you know, ceiling is. So I don't feel bad about including him in the matchup. 
Diaz, I think, has had a home run in yeah, three straight games, and you get the salary savings at $3,500. Uh, Pena, 305 on the year, five home runs, 23 RBI, nine stolen bases, back-to-back multi-hit games and hits in four of the last five games. And Alvarez has been good for years, 12 homers, 28 RBI, multiple hit games in three out of the last five games, and three home runs in the last five games. So let me know your thoughts. Feel free to leave any comments, but otherwise go out there and win that guap.